Now, just a moment ago, we were talking about how some real people like you and me uh, are making a difference in public health in their communities, how they're giving voices uh, to things that need to be talked about and need to be addressed, and they're not just waiting on uh, the global policymakers to take action. Joining me now are some of these people. You get the microphone. Now, here's the tricky part, guys. I have identical twins on the set. And it needs to be said that my team will not tell me which one is which. Now, I'm an identical twin as well. So I'm going to do to them what I would want people to do to me, which is I'm going to give them questions together and let them fight over who's going to answer that. The twins are, and I know you probably hate being called twins because I hated that, Izum and Bear Hagazi. They are both medical students in Egypt and delegates here at the World Health Assembly. They've been working to build more support among young people in planning the next set of development goals, those sustainable development goals that we've talked about. I also have Kenneth Simbaya, a journalist from Tanzania here, uh, who's been doing some work on maternal newborn child health, if I have my information correctly. And I'm going to start with him because it's safer ground than letting the twins fight, OK? <laughs> Let's start with you, Kenneth. Tell me about your work in Tanzania, if you would. Yeah, thank you. Um, my work in Tanzania, basically, I'm focusing on reporting on maternal and newborn health. Uh, basically, what we do is to enlighten the citizens to make sure that they understand issues pertaining to maternal and newborn health. Um, we believe that with information, um, the citizen will be empowered with information the government uh, or whoever is responsible for maternal and newborn health will have something to work on. In Tanzania, um, the media hasn't been that much proactive when reporting maternal issues as compared to other staff. If a person is knocked down by a car, all papers will cover that story tomorrow. But every day, 24, between 22 and 24 women die, but we don't see that coming up oftenly. So what you are trying to do now is to inspire journalists to give the priority it deserves because a woman losing life in giving new, uh, birth is the same as a person dying by being knocked by a car. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is to bring in the, 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 the press so that they can play its role to make sure that we are ending preventable maternal death because it's doable. We are told that 80% of uh, maternal deaths are preventable. Now, you've been quoted, if, if this is right, as saying, quote, what stunned me is the way they were able to offer solutions and point out what is and isn't working well, working as well as what should be included in future planning. Can you talk about that a little bit for me? How have you gained and learned and been able to change things through this? That's correct. I mean, that quote came to when you were doing citizen hearings. Um, we did citizen hearings. And I was there trying to report what people were saying, what citizens were saying, and what the government were saying. Then what stunned me is to see that um, what initially was seen as a problem when people were brought together, meaning the government, uh, service providers and service beneficiaries, discussing what they think can be done to end maternal and newborn death. Actually, the answers came from citizens themselves. Yeah, yeah. That stunned me. For instance, People would blame that we don't have a health facility here. We need, the government isn't providing this. But when the government and citizens sat together, they were made to understand that there is something the government can do and there is something citizens can do. So citizens were saying that, okay, if that's the case, this is what we will do. That means that they were offering solutions. If uh, mothers delivering at home is riskier, we will make sure that there is no women delivering at home. If you look uh, deeply, that means that anything happening in a community, citizens are standing a better chance to contribute to make sure that women are not yeah. delivering in, in homes and instead they are using health facilities to deliver. So to me, by so saying, they were offering solution to what has been seen as a problem. That, that makes a lot of sense. They know what they need. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Let's go to the Hagazi brothers now. Uh, let's start with your work. You have to give them the microphone and let them fight over it because I'm not giving the other one mine. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about your work in Egypt to get young people involved in setting the next level of goals, the next round of goals uh, for health especially. 
Yeah, so I will take on this question on Beher. Uh, and I'll be glad first to be speaking on my behalf. So uh, not like as uh, Egypt, so to uncover the diplomatic way of talking, which I think most of the people watching us would appreciate it more than the diplomatic way. Uh, so uh, for this process, we had started this for uh, like two years now. We started in the beginning of 2014 to include and listen and hear from uh, youth generally, uh, not even certain uh, major in university, just to listen from youth, how do you want to shape the, uh, how do you want to shape SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and then we found that it's very proud, and then we said that we will focus into health, and at this point we have made a lot of consultations with the uh, related, with the related uh, uh, health measures, uh, and politics. So we have attracted youth from medical schools, from political schools, from even economic schools, pharmacists, dentistry, and nurseries. Uh, and then we collected, uh, we have attracted them and started to launch uh, a simulation for the World Health Assembly to act as a platform for youth to. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> so we have attracted them and made them simulate the World Health Assembly. By this uh, simulation, we created a platform to listen and hear to them evenly, democratically, what do you think about this. We give them the same papers that the secretaries give to the governments uh, to see how health should be included. And then they speak freely, they speak out of any diplomatic context. They speak what they feel, what they hear, what they think of, and put it into a uh, resolution, simulating the resolution that is happening here. And we had several consultations starting from the year 2014. Uh, we had six in Egypt. They were held in Cairo. And uh, we had as well several international uh, consultations. This happened in Tunisia, it happened in Denmark, it happened in Germany, in uh, Cologne. Uh, and through this, we had like uh, a representative outcome. Uh, throughout these consultations, how youth are thinking of health inclusion in the post-2015 agenda and how they want to shape health and the sustainable development goals in the summit in September in New York this year. Azum, let me come to you. Uh, what are some of the issues that young people seem to care about the most? What are the things that the youth should care the most, right? That's yeah. Like, that's your question. yeah, yeah. With the sustainable development goals, where do they plug in? Um, so... Um, this question is a bit tricky because youth. You can are, give it to Bear. Yeah, <laughs> youth might have better answers. Um, it's a bit tricky because we, as youth, we are almost concerned with the same thing that everyone is concerned of. We are concerned for the good of people in general. But what makes difference from youth and others that we see the things from like transparent lens. We don't have any um, any agendas. We just want the better for the world. That's the main thing that makes youth okay. better than others. Uh, I just to turn uh, to the point that he has mentioned that we started like working on, on on like two years ago. I don't know if, if that was clear in our um, uh, in your presentation that we are the youth delegates of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So we have started to be uh, like one of the biggest things that we said. Okay, if we want to bring youth to that platform, we need to start from better place and the best place was the best place is member states so we should be with the member states and then we started okay it was a crazy idea to just be as uh, engaged in the delegation itself and be speaking on on Egypt behalf and just crazy idea and then we started to gather all the people who can support us we made an advocacy campaign for like mm -hmm. six months just to have the idea tabled and uh, at that point, we were not sure whether this would happen or not, but we said, let's give it a chance. Youth should be engaged that way, which is the best way, which is the optimum way. And then it worked. And when it worked, this gave us like the only thing that it, uh, uh, the only thing that, oh yeah, so the, the only thing that we got that even the government, when it, uh, it ha like you think that it, it's impossible, it is possible. They listen after maybe after like several months, but they listen and they work. And it was for the first time in Africa and the Middle East. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. I, I, um, I'm also an advocate. I'm an ad advocate for youth issues. What is, what youth are much concerned, especially in the post 20, post 2015 development goals. 
there are, there are a lot, but key ones are employment and health, particularly sexual reproductive health and rights. Coming from developing countries, you would see that a big number of maternal deaths, young people have contributes, there's a big percentage of young people. Taking an example from my country, whereby almost up to 35, 20 to 30% of girls aged 15 into 18 have already had sex at that age and some are mothers already so they are very much concerned with that they need information to help them make informed decision they need to access healthy friendly services they need employment and so forth to me those are the things which are much more concerning young people and all issue of engagement as has been mentioned they don't want to be told they want to be engaged because they know what they want as young people well, you know, that, that's almost getting close to the last question, and I'm going to let each of you take a stab at it. Uh, and, and that is, what can working with young people accomplish, with youth accomplish, that working with policymakers, global policymakers, cannot accomplish? Is he more um, It can accomplish a lot. This is the first thing that I have to say. Um, as I said, like, we are not biased. We are, we, we really want to seek okay what's what the people need and we do it this is the first thing that will never come to the global policy makers they just uh, have their and this is right like they are representing the country they're representing their NGOs they're representing whatever and at that point they are focusing on that and they don't mind having the like the good for the for the people but they can see it because they're having different lens we're having that lens people centered but just to turn to the last thing that uh, you mentioned uh, in your question, what are the things that matter the youth most? I'd say the thing that matters us the most as youth here uh, is universal health coverage. And we have touched that in the post Wednesday agenda. This is our area of work. And we like that because I see it by the lens of people as well. This is the good for the people. This is what I feel in my population, not only in my population, in my country, in the rest of Africa, in the rest of the Middle East, in the left of so many countries, in other continents, in the whole world. Even countries who have achieved better health systems, they need to work more. And that's for issues like social justice, like equity. Universal health coverage is the only solution for that. And also, when it comes to goal three and the, and the sustainable development goals, universal health coverage can entangle all of that. And that's why we are here, supportive to it, and that's why we need to work on it. Yeah, so thank you. Mayor, how about you? Yeah. Very briefly, we only have about 30 seconds left. Yeah, so about youth, I would say just two words. That we are bold enough to say what we want to say with no any kind of political constraints or whatever. Second thing, that we are seeing the word as pink world. We are not seeing it as a flag that is having other things behind everything. We see it, we see the picture as clear as we want to see it. Uh, and uh, our interventions is always to say like in equity we don't want to leave someone behind the equity in health we don't want to leave someone behind the access to uh, health care uh, so it's all our agendas is to try to support it and whenever we met youth around the world they just have the same way of uh, of thinking the same way of approach towards uh, dealing with issues so I think this is the key factor of, of youth Kenneth, yeah. well, no, Kenneth, you're going to get my microphone if you need it, but uh, you have two questions to address. That one that I just asked, what can youth accomplish that global policymakers can't? And you have a question that just came in from Twitter. What inspired you most about the World Health Assembly this year? You've got to take two at once. All right, fine. I start with the first one. I think working with youth, I mean, um, the world is going to accomplish a lot. First we will have if we are talking of sustainable development goals more or less those belong to young people people aged 50 60 now will have been gone very old by the time we accomplish sdgs but young people like these two boys here they are the ones who will be trying to make sure that whatever is needed to be achieved with sustainable development goals is achieved but most important is that we will have policies and and strategies which are responsive to what young people need. So for me, there will be ownership. If, if I mean, if we work, if, if we work with young people, there will be that ownership which will lead to, I mean, implementing whatever is agreed. 
that's one benefit of working with young people uh, uh, as opposed to working with policymakers alone. The second thing is what inspired me most. Mm -hmm. What inspired me is uh, to this World Health Assembly is, you know, as a journalist, as I walk, I see and hear. When I walk and hear issues about accountability, I get inspired. Because the reason I'm here is because we did something to drive accountability. So for me, since I arrived here, I've been keeping, keeping my ears open to see who else is pro-accountability. So this accountability has been a buzzword here for me, and I'm sure everything rises and falls on accountability. So okay. accountability and citizen engagement has been something which has made me get inspired and um, being optimistic that what is being agreed here, if citizen engagement is going to be there, then things will never be the same. Sustainable development goals are going to be a huge success. And I think the three of you also inspire us in different ways uh, as well. It makes us uh, very comfortable that the next generation of public health uh, will be in very good hands with people like you working on it. Next time you go to a simulation of the World Health Organization, you have to have a World Health Plus Social Good set. Yeah, it's a very important part of World Health Assembly, right? Let me thank all of you. Uh, thank you for what you do, uh, and thank you for coming by. Thank you so much. That has been nice having you. Very good. Thank, thank That's you. all we have time for today here at World Health Plus Social Good.